I'm sure you've seen these panels pop up every time you change a channel in Studio One. and been like, ah, I gotta close that thing. So what if I told you that thing is the most powerful tool in Studio One 5? Those are Studio One Five's macro controls that allow you to control multiple parameters at a time. Let me show you. This is the macro control for the lead channel. I've got several effects happening at once. Hi. So this is on the lead. So just by adjusting this one simple control, as you can see, we're adjusting the depth of the chorus, the amount of reverb, the amount of high cut and low cut, we can bypass it. We don't want the chorus, but we like everything else that's happening bypass that. Let me show you how easy it is to set this up. For this preset, I used all stock plugins and I wanted to have the track sounding farther away and thinner to being more full and even having a, like a chorus effect as well. So in order to do that, we'll start with a pro EQ. So just throw your pro EQ on the track or any other EQ that you like. And we're going to make sure we have this low cut knob and we right click and connect low cut frequency. We can connect it to the knob or the X, Y axis. I like to actually do both. So I have all of the options. So in this case, we'll do the knob and we'll go ahead and hit this little wrench icon here. And you can select the lowest to the highest frequency that you want the low cut to affect. So when the knob is turned all the way down, want it to do the least amount so that would be 20 hertz and then the highest amount that i want to cut is about 350 so what we'll do is turn the knob all the way up and then watch this here as i adjust this so it's not the most intuitive way to do it but once you do it you can set it and forget it so do about there 385 and so what that means is when i turn the knob down the low cut is the lowest frequency 20 hertz and then when I go all the way up it can only max out at 385 now you can set this to whatever you like I've just found that for this purpose this is about the frequency that I like and I also mentioned we could assign that to the xy axis in this case I'm going to assign it to the y axis you can't right click and do it again because I'm not sure why studio one maybe gives an option to assign it to multiple macros but uh, in the meantime just click on this parameter here and find low cut and then low cut frequency. You drag it in and now you can make the same settings. So then this is all the way up on Y. The highest frequency will be what you want. In my case, it was about 380. And now when we're on the screen with the xy pads if, if you don't see the xy pads um and it looks like this hit the uh little carrot there and now when we adjust this go all the way down actually you know what i do want to invert that so i want i want it to be cut when it's all the way down and then when we go up it opens up and becomes less filtered in order to do that hit the wrench and over here when you click this you have this option here to invert y or x invert y Yes. Now, when we're all the way down, we are cutting everything. And then when we go up, we are opening up. And what I like to do is use the same control to control multiple things. So we can do very complicated mix moves in one broad stroke. And this is a great way to make your static mixes more interesting and just have your mixes constantly evolving so that people's ears don't get bored. So now that we've done the first one, we can do the second one and we can do the same thing. Right click on high cut frequency and connect high cut frequency to channel control. And we'll go to knob two. And when the knob is down, I want it to be the opposite, right? So 20 K. So we have to edit this and I like the maximum to be about it's all to your taste, but for me, the maximum frequency should be about 800. And if you want to hear the effect even more, you can double these, the strength of these, and we can assign also the Y axis of this pad to the high cut frequency. And we'll do the same thing. So when the pad is all the way up, will be open and when we're down we are 
at the lowest point, which we decided was 800. And so now that they approximate the same. And so when you look at the XY axis, you have this. So this is just the synth opening up. Which to me, that works. That makes it sound like it's far away and it's getting closer. And to really make that even more dramatic, we can add a reverb. So just add your reverb. You can use any plugin, but I find that uh, medium hall setting and maybe about 1.5 seconds and a tiny amount of pre-delay works really well. And let's listen to what this sounds like. I think 40 is probably the max amount of reverb I wanna have. And I want the reverb to be active when this is the bottom. And so what we're gonna do is just blend the mix in. So we'll assign the wet dry mix to knob three. And when it's all the way up, we want it to be 40%. So let's do that. Do about 40 there. And you can test it by pushing this up and all right. And you can do the same thing with the X, Y axis. Also, I want when the uh, Y axis is all the way down, I want it to be farther away. So I also want the reverb to be engaged there. So we will have it max out at 40%, but we want it inverted here. When it's all the way down, it will be at 40%. And then as you push it up, it gets closer and closer to you, which means less and less reverb. And we can test that by hitting the wrench and press and play. When this is all the way down, you hear the reverb a little bit. And then as you go up, you get less and less reverb. To so simulate going farther and closer, closer and farther. One more thing we could do to make this even more interesting is we could add a chorus, we could add a delay. In this case, I'll add a chorus. We could add any effect here. And for this one, I'm gonna have it do two voices in chorus mode, and I'll have the depth be affected by the X axis and knob four. So we'll do that. That will add it to knob four, and then we'll also add it to the X axis here. Have to find it and this is all the way up the depth is all the way up so that should be right let's double check it so you can automate this to change over time and this becomes super powerful and you can save these presets so that you can come back to them later. Go over here to this carrot at the top of the channel and scroll down, click store effects chain and save it as you want. I've already done this. I have front to back thickening. So if you want to do this yourself, you're welcome to do it. And if you want to download this particular preset, click the link in the description. Also, I'll have plenty more presets coming to help you keep your mixes more dynamic. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you think it will help other people, make sure you share it and leave me a comment if you have any questions about this process or if it's something that you use. And until next time, let's get songs done.